Hi, I'm Anthony with Action VFX. Today I want to walk you through how we can add some of Action VFX's elements into a shot like this, which is a full CG render. Some of the elements I used here are dirt blasts, spark explosions, concrete debris, and gun smoke. I'll go over the basic comp breakdown of setting up the shot and then tying in the elements together. Okay, so here is the shot, and I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing in the elements. Well, I'm gonna start setting them up. I've already brought them in. I'm gonna start setting them up and getting them into the scene. So at the beginning, our TIE fighter is shooting at the X-Wing, and this is the first shot that kinda goes off, and here's the, uh, the blaster. So it goes from here to there. And now we kind of, we see the trajectory of where it's heading. Right behind that rock. And that's when it would just boom, blow it up. So why don't we go ahead and set up that right now. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of view these. Well, actually let's go ahead and go in here and let's mark where it hits right about maybe a second so around maybe 1040 1042 we're gonna put a note here let's go up here and let's just type in sticky note and let's do what did I say 1042 1042 this up to 32 so you can see it so this is when we know that the effect has to happen um, is that that 10 20 that 1042 mark um, that's going to help us with our retiming and help us when we start jumping into the 3d part of it okay so 1042 that's when it's supposed to hit let's look at the shot or these effects these elements so this is the Dirt Blast, although it's not playing. Oh. So I work out of uh, 1,001, so I'm going to bring this to 1,000. That'll bring me back to my frame one. So we're going to add time offsets to all of these and just have them start at 1,000 frames. Okay. So this is the Dust Blast, or the Dirt Blast. Uh, and as you can see already, just by the element alone, it looks really good. Uh, there's not gonna really be much to do here. It's, the shot goes by so fast too, and there's so much motion blur, and it's gonna be in the background that um, we really don't have to do much. Okay, so we have that one. Then we have, this one's great, the Spark Blast. A lot of Star Wars effects have a lot of Spark Blast in it. And then we'll use this for some of the, the debris that kicks up when it hits, as if it destroyed the rock in front of it. And then we'll mess with that some more. All right, so now what we want to do is we kind of want to put these on cards. So I'm going to hit, go ahead and hit tab. For me, I need a card. So I'm going to bring up the card. And I'm going to go ahead and just start dropping these all on a card. Now, let's look at this. So we're in our 3D scene and we can see all of our elements are on the card already. Okay, so let's look at our explosion. This one we kind of want to bring up. And then we want to have the spark right about here. We're kind of building off of it right now. Just kind of kit bashing this together. Then we scrub through it and we can see that all of our elements laid on top of each other. We have a pretty good effect. I don't like how small though the dirt blast is. So I'm gonna go ahead and really scale this up. And since it's behind the rock, we can also just roto this out. Add a roto paint, and then let's roto all of this out. We're 
gonna go ahead and copy, paste this here. Oop, sorry, right here. We're gonna pre mold this. Oh, yeah, I forgot to invert this. And we kind of want to merge all this, so we're gonna use a merge geo. And we're gonna select this guy, and then shift select all of these, and then hit Y. It'll connect everything right off the bat. And then at the end of this, we're gonna do a transform geo. Now you can add an axis if you want, I like to, and then I can, I'm only focused on that. And then go to scene. We're gonna add a scene in here. And then we're gonna, we're gonna now take this whole thing that we just made and we're gonna add it to a scene. Uh, and then we're gonna bring in our camera from our actual render scene, which you can request. Uh, if you're working with a 3D artist, or if it's your own thing, you can just export out a camera. Uh, it's always best to use the camera from your 3D scene with stuff like this. Uh, so let's go ahead and just add it. Now we got a camera. Boom, there it is. Now we need to know where to place it. Let's also scale this up. And before we go too far, I need to make absolute sure I know where I'm going. So that's why I brought, I exported out pieces of the geo from the actual scene. And I'm gonna use that as a way to determine where I'm supposed to be placing this card. So if I look at this, it's brought in my geo. And this is just a, in the limit cache. But I know that I'm going to be putting it, the effect over here behind this little rock or boulder or whatever. So let's go ahead and add a constant. We can raise this up a little bit. So we'll do 0 0.18, 0 0.18, 0 0.18, 0 0.18. Let me kind of like raise scale a little bit. And we're gonna take this card. We're gonna actually add this here. And right now we're just kind of placing it. I mean, that's really all this is at this point, is just placing. Then we need to look through our camera. Let's add a scan line. Scan line render. Bring this over here. Drop this in. So we're gonna connect our camera to our scene, and then we're gonna connect our scene to the or sorry, we're gonna connect the camera to the render, the scan line render, and then we're gonna connect that scan line render to the scene. And then if we click on here and hit tab, we can kind of see where things are at. I'm gonna split screen that. Let's move this over some more. Now we wanna time offset this a little bit. So now that we have it placed, we just kind of want it to start in the correct spot. Like we, we really want this to, um, well, first of all, let's turn this back to black. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna run a retime all of this. Um, and I'm sure any pro who's watching this can be like, that's a terrible way to do it. Well, you know what? Fine. I am going to add 
um, a retime. This just pushes it over because I want I want to start at 1001. This retime is supposed to speed it up. I'm gonna speed it up to two. Um, this time offset lets me slide this around. This newly retime thing. So I wanted this to start at 1042. So it'll start at 10.42 and it'll just... So that is looking good. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing for the rest of these. Okay, now that we got that set up, we have the timing that I think is right. Um, we're gonna go ahead and test it. We're gonna lay it onto the shot and see how it works. Uh, let's go ahead and shuffle some alpha around. All right, great. So I just spent a little bit more time moving these cards and placing them in a better position. And I think I'm happy with it now. So I went ahead and started moving uh, the next effect. And that is where the blaster grazes alongside this, this tall rock tower. And um, let me see if I can, there we go. There it is right there. So it's the same process. Uh, you just create a 3D card or just a card that you put the elements onto. And you just move them around, you move the cards in place. And uh, once you do it for the first element, like this one, uh, you can then just copy and paste and just put it on the second one. And they, they should just lay right on top of each other. At that point, you just kind of move one forward a little bit and give them a little bit of breathing room. And then you just do the same process. You mess with the timing offset and you line it up to where you want, when you want these to start up from the explosion. So I already had gone in and set those up where I just kind of placed them, position them, and then I just move the time offset a little bit further. Same, same deal with putting down my timestamp or at least my note here where I wanted it to start off at. Okay, now that our render is done, we can see what our shot's looking like with these elements in place. Overall, I'm happy with the look and quality of these effects. They really help sell uh, the look and realism of the action. And I hardly had to do much. It's just moving cards around and retiming and offsetting really. So anyway, thanks for joining me in my walkthrough of this shot. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to leave a comment below to let us know what other new tutorials you'd like to see. This is Anthony with ActionVFX.com. See you next time.